Hello, this is Alicia Richards. This is my geriatric syndrome case study. I completed my study on um, the geriatric syndrome of frailty. So um, frailty is characterized by multi-system physiological decline and increased vulner vulnerability to stressors and adverse clinical outcomes. The frailty phenotype defines frailty as a distinct clinical syndrome meeting three or more of the five phenotype criteria, which include weakness, slowness, low level of physical activity, self-reported exhaustion, and unintentional weight loss. <clears throat> um, so here's some background and significance of frailty. Uh, the commonly accepted estimates of frailty prevalence range from 10% to 14% of the over 65 year old population. Um, and this increases with age. So there, it goes up to 25% in the age group of 85 and older. Um, there's higher prevalence among women than men. And it's also been shown that frailty is more, uh, most pronounced among those with lower education and income levels. Um, so why is this important to us? Basically, there's some associations seen between frailty and functional impairment, fractures, hospital admissions, and disability. Um, <clears throat> people who report frailty have more difficulty with mobility, performing housework, gardening, getting dressed, shopping, bathing, showering. Basically, um, ADLs and IADLs <clears throat> are affected if they um, are positive for frailty, and there's increasing evidence Frailty is not inevitable. Um, it can be predicted, it can be delayed and rever reversed to some degree. So this is my patient. She was a 82 year old female um, Panamanian descent. Um, here are her allergies, penicillin, levoquin, codeine, and her current medications. So basically she um, was on ibuprofen for chronic knee pain. Uh, she has a history of um, some stress incontinence, uh, low vitamin D level in the past. She takes, is her, takes excuse me, her Xanax for some anxiety, um, but she says she usually only takes that in the evenings before bed sometimes, not all the time to help her sleep at night. Uh, she has a history of um, some cardiac palpitations, and her cardiologist had her on metoprolol just as needed if she was having palpitations and they were um, symptomatic. Um, and she's diabetic, so her Genuvia and her Lantus and Glucophage for her diabetes and um, HDTZ for her blood pressure. Um, health maintenance, disease prevention, she was up to date on immunizations that would be needed for her age group, which um, included her influenza vaccine, Prevnar, Pneumovax, and her shingles vaccine. She is also up to date on health maintenance as far as mammograms, colonoscopy, and yearly vision screenings. Uh, past medical history. Of course, we talked earlier, hypertension, diabetes, some um, mild depression, anxiety. She has a um, renal mass, which is a cancer that was diagnosed last year, which is followed by a urologist. No treatment at this time. They are just monitoring it. Uh, history of sick sinus syndrome, bradycardia, intermittent palpitations, which um, she does see a cardiologist yearly for this as well. And again, the metoprolol was for it, treatment of it chronic fatigue and malaise, alpha thalassemia 1, vitamin D deficiency, osteoarthritis, and breast cancer in 2012, which she had a lumpectomy and radiation, no chemo. Surgical history, she's had cataract surgery, bilateral, um, again, lumpectomy, hysterectomy, and a history of a car accident with some fractures many years ago, and C-sections times three. She has three adult children, all living. Um, <clears throat> and she lives alone. She's a very independent um, lady. So presentation of the patient with frailty. Um, it is important to note that frailty can be hidden. It's a gradual deterioration of physiological reserves, um, which may go unnoticed if not specifically sought out or um, go undetected due to presumptions that it's related to a chronic disease or disability. Um, and so one of the easy ways that pretty much seek this out is to have them complete the um, simple frail questionnaire, which is what I did for this patient. Um, there's a form, very simple. These are the questions 
that are asked. I let her complete it and you can see where I put yes these are the ones she answered yes to which she said yes she was fatigued. Um, she did have more than five illnesses and she had lost more than five percent of her um, body weight in the last six months that was not intentional um, and she pretty much related that to stress um, because she's caring for her elderly mother who's a hundred her and her sisters take turns staying with her um, and also she's very compliant diabetic she's very strict in what she eats and and watches that closely she said um, other questions that she reported no to were resistance. Can you uh, cannot walk up one flight of stairs? She said she could. A robot cannot walk one block. She said she could walk a block. Um, and then if you score three or more, that equals frailty. One or two is pre-fail. So some common complaints that um, a person who is experiencing frailty may report is decreased energy, um, may tire easily after a few minutes of activity such as walking or cleaning up around the house, not having the strength to do things they once did, maybe like opening jars and things like that at home, uh, decreased grip strength, may report not being able to get out and shop like they used to or keep up with family members when they're going out places. Subjective data, her review of systems, pertinent positives, positives and negatives. Um, these were her positives, fatigue, palpitations, hearing loss, knee pain, weight loss, depression, anxiety. Negatives, we went through every system, of course. <clears throat> Just wanna make sure there's not something else going on that could be related to her fatigue, weight loss. Um, objective data, vital screens, uh, in screening tools, her vital signs were all normal. Um, other screening tools I did on the assessment was the hearing screen. She did wear bilateral hearing aids. She has for several years, but her um, screening was still poor. Um, she was a 28, and a score of 26 to 40 suggests significant hearing handicap. And she, she even said, I, I can't even hear with my hearing aids. So that was something she was going to do is follow up with her audiologist and have them look at the hearing aids and see if there's anything else that could be done to help with her hearing um, she basically kind of just read, would look at you when you're talking to her and re help by reading your lips. Um, simple frail questionnaire again, we did it. And she was considered managing well. So basically people whose medical problems are well controlled but are not regularly active beyond routine walking. Um, I completed the mini mental status exam on her. She scored a 28 out of 30, which was good. There was no clinical signs of impairment with her. Did the geriatric de depression screen scale, which she reported depression, um, but she actually scored a three, which does not suggest depression. I believe hers was more um, kind of a situational depression from having to care from, for her mom and some other family stressors she had going on. Um, and then the Tenetti Balance Assessment score, uh, Tool, she scored a 26, which put her at low risk. Her main thing was her knee pain gave her some trouble, especially after sitting for a while and getting up to walk. She could really um, have some difficulty there with pain. Her physical exam did a complete head-to-toe physical exam, um, highlighted some pertinence there. Um, of course, her hearing was an issue. I made sure that with her weight loss again and her fatigue that we didn't notice any um, lymphadenopathy or masses. Heart assessment was normal. Cardiovascular was normal. Abdomen assessment was normal. No masses. Um, <clears throat> no tenderness. And her gait, she was steady without devices, um, but occasional limp noted on the right side due to new, uh, knee pain. And then her get up and go was 13 seconds. She was slower to get up out of the chair and used her arm, the arms as assistance to rise. Complains of pain in the right knee when going from sitting to standing. Performed the rest of the test without any difficulty. Um, then I did also the mini mental status exam, which we talked about earlier. She had a 28, which was, which was a good report for her. Okay, um, objective data, diagnostics and labs. So this is what we ordered. CBC, CMP, hemoglobin, vitamin D, um, UA, which she had trace hematuria, which is 
chronic for her and it's followed by her urologist. Um, lipids were normal, TSH and T4 were normal. So all of her lab work was pretty good. Her A1C was even 6.2. We did not do any um, diagnostics on this visit such as x-ray, CTs or MRI. She did have a history of x-rays of her knees which showed some osteoarthritis in the past um, which was causing her knee pain. But these are additional tests that could be considered for any patient you may feel like is um, having an issue with frailty and you just want to make sure that we're ruling out any other injuries or disease processes that could be contributing to their symptoms. <clears throat> so final diagnosis and why we chose this was chronic fatigue and malaise. Basically chose it because we ruled out everything else. Um, wanted to make sure that she didn't have thyroid issue. Her TSH and T4 were normal. Wanted to make sure she wasn't anemic. Um, <clears throat> which she was not, hemoglobin and hematocrit were normal. She does have a history of vitamin D deficiency, but her vitamin D level was within normal limits on this visit. So the plan, so what we would do for her, what we did is I talked to her um, in depth about just knowing her limitations physically and mentally when caring for her mom and taking time for herself. We talked about her risk of falls and that the best way to help that was by going for a walk, you know, 30 minutes each day, do some strength training exercises, balance exercises two to three times per week. And this can not only help her strength and endurance, but also her <clears throat> mental health as well. We talked about not skipping meals, making sure she eats healthy breakfast, um, lunch and dinner with you know a good combination of fruits, veggies, protein, complex carbs. And if she needed to, that she could you know even drink like a boost that had some protein in it. Um, and that she didn't have to control her blood sugar as tightly as maybe she once had, especially if at any point she was um, experiencing hypoglycemia. The next set here are the evidence-based um, recommendations for treatment of frailty, um, which should aim to prevent, delay, reverse, or reduce the severity of frailty and prevent or re reduce adverse health outcomes in those whose frailty is not reversible. Um, exercise is the interventional modality that has the most consistent benefit in treating frailty and its key components. Exercise um, has good impacts on all organ systems especially musculoskeletal endocrine immune. Um, another important area of intervention is to prevent biological, socio socioeconomic, and environmental stressors and improve clinical outcomes. And the main challenge barriers for this plan for this patient was just the lack of time to exercise due to her, you know, having to help care for her elderly mother. Community resources, a great resource for frailty would be physical therapy if, if they can go. Um, they can teach them, you know, strength training exercises. Um, and if they can't go to PT all the time, then they can even do, um, be taught exercises to be done at home, or they could go to a local gym or a senior center. Um, she could also benefit from working with a nutritionist who could, um, Teach her, you know, adequate, make sure she's just consuming adequate amount of calories and protein. Um, multidisciplinary health team, again, PT and nutritionist. Um, she needs to continue to follow up with her cardiologist and neurologist. And um, other patients that you may be seeing could benefit from a geriatrician, um, a social worker, pharmacist, occupational, and physical therapist as well. So health behaviors that were identified in this case study, hers were lack of exercise strength training, strict adherence to dietary choices to control her blood sugar, um, and increased stress related to caring for her elderly mother. Um, and we talked about that too, as far as maybe her and her family having somebody come into the house to help with her mom so that they could have time away. That was not something that her family was agreeable to at this time. Um, social determinants. Um, again, she, at the time she has to spend taking care of her mom, and she had reported some feeling of isolation from having to just be there all the time and not being able to spend time with other friends and family members. Um, socioeconomic issues and cultural issues, she has a fixed income. Um, cultural issues, again, family was not acceptable to having someone come in help the mother. 
And there was no legal or ethical issues considered at this time for this particular case. So conclusion, um, one of the most important things I learned is that frailty is not inevitable um, aging process, but we can do things to prevent it, to correct it, to slow it down. Um, goals for patients with frailty include improve physical and psychological function, reduce ho hospitalizations and references, and thank you for your attention. in adverse events, develop adaptive strategies addressing disability and dependence, improve quality of life, and decrease early mortality in older adults. Exercise in comprehensive geriatric interdisciplinary assessment and treatment are the key interventions for the frailty syndrome at this time. And nutrition intervention is another non-pharmacologic um, thing that we can do to correct any deficits including micronutrients and address um, weight loss of frailty syndrome.